All right. Graph of three modular functions in the form ax plus b are given. Find the values of a and find the values of b of the three graphs. Now, we discussed on Friday that the, the slope is a good indicator of what the a value is, didn't we? What's the slope of the, uh, what would be the slope of this one here, do you reckon? The blue one. One. So it'll be f of x equals the modulus of 1x, or just x on its own, plus b equals to something. Pick a point and test the point. So I can pick any point I want here. See the point uh, 2, 3? Have you seen point 2, 3? What would be an easier point? Probably an easier point would be uh, minus 1, 0. Would you agree with that? Or 0, 1 would be an easy one. 0, 1 is actually the easiest one. All right, you, 0, 1. Uh, I'll test both of them, to be honest. I just want to be thorough in this case. Let's be thorough. Okay. When you put an x value of minus 1 in, the y value should be 0. So 0 equals, I start with, place x with, minus 1. This, this means b has to equal 1. Is that okay? What happens if I, if I test with 0, 1? And I sort of realized that was a mistake halfway through. What happened here? If I test with 0, 1? Or was it a mistake? Uh, f of x equals x plus b. Use 0, 1. So 0, 1 will be when x is 0, y is 1. 1 equals 0 plus b. Now what's the problem here? What's the problem with that answer? There's something I'm not happy about. It. b could be plus 1 or minus 1. So I won't be happy using that point. So that's why when I thought of that initially, I said, wait a minute, that gives me two answers, while the other one only gives me one answer. So that's why you have to select, you have to select uh, accurately, right? Always use where it crosses the x-axis. So is everybody happy that graph is simply uh, x plus 1 for the blue one? Okay. Uh, what about the red one? What's the, what's the slope of the red one, Charlie? Oops. Yeah, the slope. Uh, look at the red graph. One across, two up. One across, two up. What type of slope is that? One across and two up. It is a slope of two. Two up for every one across is a slope of two. So what does that mean about my A value? A value, anybody? 2x. Now we're going to test the uh, where it crosses the x-axis. Where does it cross the x-axis? Minus 1 and 0. So, when x equals minus 1, the answer is 0. So what does that mean about b? b will have to be equal to 2. So what's our answer? 2x plus 2. Is that right? We all good? All right. Next part, uh, h of x. What does that equal? Once again, ax plus b. What's the slope of h? 1 across and 3 up will give me a slope of 3x. Uh, once again, we're going to select an x value. We're going to select 0, minus 1, 0, one last time. And what we should get is the y value is minus 1 when the x value is 0. Oh, the other way around even, because that'll give me two answers. So it's 0 equals 3 times minus 1, which is minus 3 plus b. Is that right? So that means b has to equal plus 3. What's h of x then? 3x plus 3. We all right with that? So, all right, let's move on. Yes? What's, what are they telling the... Oh, verify each equation with x equals minus 2. No bother, I'll do that now. Uh, my three equations are... My three equations are here, aren't they? Where's the f of x one? Oh, yeah, it's here. 
Are everybody happy with that? Do the three equations? Now, what does it mean by fair flying with x equals uh, minus 2? What point is minus 2 for the first one? Well, for the f of x equation, when you put in minus 2, you should get an answer of 1. Let's figure that out. H of minus 2 equals 3 times minus 2. Sorry, F. I'm on F, not H. Sorry, excuse me. Sorry, minus 2, 1 belongs to F. So F is up here. So it's going to be uh, replace X with minus 2. So it's going to be minus 2 plus 1, which is the modulus of minus 1. And does the modulus of minus 1 equal 1? Proven, isn't it? I'll just prove g of x next, and then we'll move on after that. What, what's the point for g of x? Minus 2. 2. So when x is minus 2, the y value should be 2. Test it out. What's g minus 2? 2 times minus 2 plus 2. Minus, yep, yeah, which is minus 2. And that answer will be 2. And you've verified your answers then, haven't you? Good. Let's move on. Did we have five to do, was it? Did somebody want five? Okay. Yeah. There's five there. Draw these graphs on the same axis and then hence solve them, right? So does everybody know how to get them on the calculator? Where do you reckon from minus? I'll just do one of them as an example. Uh, you just put in, oh, we can do both at the same time. So you press the abs value, where's abs? There it is there. You do x minus 2. G of x equals abs x minus 6. Uh, start out, I don't know, minus 5. And a five, step of one, and we get a bunch of points to draw, don't we? Everybody agree with that? All right. In in class now, I'm just going to see if we can do this on my uh, on the geometry really quickly. Okay. So what I'll do here is, I think it's I think the word is abs. So y equals abs. Ah, there it is. Yep. Perfect. Absolute x. What's the first graph? X minus one, was it? X minus 2. Hope this works. Please check your input. Did. Ah. Maybe it works like this. That's there we go. Is, that, is everybody happy that's the first graph? Okay, and what about the next one? X minus 6, yeah. Okay. There they are there, isn't it? What point do they have in common? The point 4, 2. x equals 4 and y equals 2. They're parallel otherwise, aren't they? They're parallel on the way up and they're parallel on the way down. So there's going to be no overlap. Is that okay with you guys? Now, do you remember I said minus 5 to plus 5? Realistically, was that the right way to go? I didn't go far enough, did I? I should have went somewhere from minus, let's say, uh, let's say zero to eight. Even would have been better, wouldn't it? So, when you look through your graph, could you identify the, the point in common they had? Keep looking. Go through your numbers, and that point there, when you see on your calculator, you see this here? Oh no. <laughs> uh, at this point here, everybody knows that that's where the intercepts. Now, so lads, are we okay with that? You adjust your range and you draw out the graphs and you see where the intercept. Now we know it's x equals two, y equals x equals four, y equals two. Now, how do we do this algebraically? Uh, Matthew, how do you do this algebraically? Square both sides, yeah, and we should get a uh, quadratic. How many answers are we expecting for this quadratic? Only expecting one. Why are we only expecting one pattern? No, that's not the reason. 
it's where it's where both axes uh, it's where both graphs hit each other. How many times did they hit each other? One x value, one y value. So you're expecting stuff to happen here. You're expecting the x x squared to cancel, which they do. And then we have 12x take away 4x equals 36 take away 4 is 32. 8x equals 32. X equals 4. And if X equals 4, Y will equal. See if everybody cool with that? In this one, it will be minus 2, which is still 2. So the answer is still 4. Two. Is that okay? All right, let's keep going. All right, seven part two, Killian. Uh, yeah. Square both sides. What you get when you square it both sides? Square uh, plus four x plus four. Yeah, square three x plus four. Not x, not x squared take away x squared? 24x take away 4x? 16 take away 4? Divided by 4? Yeah, plus? 3? Okay. Uh, 2x squared, uh, reference number would be 6. Two numbers that multiply to give you 6, but add to give you 5 would be also 3 and 2. So, should be a relatively easy one to factor us. 2x into x plus 1, plus 3 into x plus 1. Did anybody get 2x plus 3 on x plus 1? All less than or equal to? 0. What type of graph do we have here? At this point here, what type of graph is it? It's U shaped, isn't it? What are my two values? X equals minus one and X equals. Yep. Okay. Anywhere in between? That's anywhere in between. What you reckon? The in between value, isn't it? Where it's smaller, so what are my answers there? Yep, we're good to go. Alright, who got that out? Yeah, any questions? Alright. Guys, ready to move on? Now, let's y equals modulus of x take away 4. What does that mean? So, for example, is if I have to point x equals minus 2, what would the y value be? The y value would be? What's the modulus of minus 2? 2. What's 2 take away 4? Minus 2. Alright, it'll work like that. What about the next one? What about uh, what about if we had x equals two? What would the y value be this time? Same thing again, isn't it? All right. So it'd be interesting to see how it comes out. Uh, you put it into your calculator. Obviously, you put both of them into your calculator and you draw them out. Everybody already knows how to do that. Don't just go from minus ten to plus ten and see what suits you. See what suits you best. I'll draw them on GeoGebra now. Some of you will just call them out for me in a second. Okay, I'll go for. Alright, here we go. What's the first one, guys? Alright, modulus of x take away 4. So, the 4 is on the outside, right? Alright, let's see how it affects it. That makes sense, doesn't it, guys? Look at this. There's the modulus of x, and when you take away 4, what do you do to all the y values? You bring all the y values down 4. So straight down like that. Everybody cool with that? 
And what about the next one? Yes? What's the difference between that and this? I'll show you now. It's a very good question. I was actually, I was actually thinking about teaching stuff before you asked me. All right. Can everybody see uh, the modulus of x? Are we cool with that? Now what happens if we put the minus 4 in the modulus sign? Ah, it moves it to the right 4. What happens if we did plus 4? It'd move it to the left 4. Do you see that? Right, cool. Uh, Daily, what was the, uh, what's the next uh, graph in that question? 0.5x is a half x? Right. How many times did it cross? I see two answers, do you? I see 8, 4 and some sort of decimal I can't really make out yet. Everybody okay with that? So that's your drawing done, and now we're going to do uh, the algebra part. So, how would you do the algebra part, lads? Oh, actually we don't have to do the algebra part, we just have to, uh, we have to use our graph, and we use our graph, and we solve the inequality. Turn page. Yeah. You don't have to do the algebra. If you read the question, it says hence. So hence would mean use the graph to solve it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody see that okay? Now, I'll show you how to do the algebra part if you really wanted to, okay? Would everybody agree the two of them are here? Here and here? Okay, which one has to be smaller? It wants the line to be, it wants the graph to be smaller than the line. I'd say that's this region here, would you? That's where it's smaller than the line. It's beneath the line. What values are they then? I think this value here is roughly two point minus two point six. And this value here is eight. So what does that mean? Starts at minus two point six, ends at eight. So what do you think? Eight and less than equal to. Right, cool with that? Now, one second. If you were to do this, trying to do this using uh, just pure algebra, you don't have to because it says hence, but here's what you do. I'd grab the 4 and move it over to your sides. Cool with that? I'd square both sides, get a quadratic equation, and I'm pretty sure my quadratic equation would spit out minus 2.6 and 8. Is that okay? Great. All right, question. Yeah, same thing. All right, let's uh, move on. So I've done that, that's eight, which is difficult. Let's move on to 11. All right. 11. Uh, you guys are gonna have a, a chapter 12 test on the 20th. What date's the 20th? Yeah, Friday the 20th, you have a test on chapter 12, okay? We're skipping some parts, we're not doing every part. Alright. Quiet, please. Alright. Once again, guys. Alright. There's two parts, isn't there? <laughs> That's just two parts to this question. The first question is in blue. The second question is in yellow. So there's two different parts to this. So what do we do with the first part? Square both. Square both sides. And I'm going to square both sides. I get 1 over 1 plus 2x to be squared. And what is 1 plus 2x to be squared? 1 plus 4x plus 4x squared equals 1. Cross multiply it upwards and what do we get? Equals 1 plus 4x plus 4x squared, yeah. Move it out of your side. 0 equals 4x plus 4x squared. Then what do we get next? 4x into x. Either x equals 0 or, or x plus 1 equals 0 and x equals minus 1. Alright. 
So, all right. Now, it wants me to, using this answer, it wants me to do part B. And what's the difference between part A and part B? That's what's the only difference between part A and part B? What's the only difference? The, the sign, isn't it? The sign is the only difference, okay? So, uh, that's right. So the only difference between the first part and the second part is the sign. So when we have the sign, what are we going to do instead? 1 over 1 plus 2x to be squared less than 1. We end up doing exactly what we did over here, didn't, didn't we? Why is this guaranteed to be positive on the bottom? It's a perfect square, so it's going to be 1 less than 1 plus 2x to be squared. Which is going to give us 1 less than 1 plus 4x plus 4x squared. Spin that around and I get 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 greater than 1. I get 4x squared plus 4x greater than 0. What does that mean? What type of uh, curve is it? It's a U shaper. Okay, so then what do we do after that? What did you say? So take out 4x and 2. What you got there? Zero and minus one. Take a run out thing. No. Greater than, yeah? So what does that mean? The extremes or the middle? And what are the extremes? Yeah, x less than minus 1 and x is greater than 0. Are we cool with that? Alrighty. So, oh, God. Question 12. Use the graphs of the following functions f of x is the modulus of x plus 1, g of x is the modulus of 3x minus 6, and h of x equals 3. Estimate the range of values of x that satisfies each of the following inequalities. Alright. I'll do part three, these are the parts I'll do. I'll do this one. I will do this one. And I'll just do two of them, okay? You guys knew the rest. Now, first of all, where is g of x smaller than f of x? Where is the red one smaller than the blue one? Anybody see it? Red one smaller than the blue one? That region there, isn't it? And where does it start and end? Call it 1.2. Less than x, less than. What do you reckon about there? 3.6 ish. Is that okay? That was pretty easy, that one. Now, the next one's not going to be as easy. So, let's color code the next one. We want blue line. Bigger than green line, and in turn that has to be bigger than the red line. Does that make sense? Blue bigger than green, bigger than red. So, where is blue bigger than green? Blue is bigger than green right here. However, is green bigger than red in those circumstances? Green stops being bigger than red in. Oh, this is difficult. Blue, bigger than green, bigger than red. Ah, there it is there. Would everybody agree with that region here? I just highlighted it here. What happens in this region? Red is smaller than green, and green in turn is smaller than blue. Would, would, that, would that make sense? So how do I write that answer? Two is smaller than x, and where does it end? Ends at three. X is less than three, and you're done. Finally, 
13. Once again, I'll only do one of them. You guys are going to be busy later. You know, it's great, isn't it? All right. Pick one of them and I'll do it. Which one do you want? All right, last one. Uh, all right. She's a both. Right. All of them. All right. Look, I'll give you. I'll tell you what. I'll give you a sense how to do them. Right. First one is I cannot guarantee. Is this? Is that meant to be a modulus? By the way. In, in your book, is that a modulus? No. All right. So what's it doing in this chapter? I'll never know. But let's give this a go. Uh, lads. I'm about to make a mistake. Can somebody please tell me what is said mistake? I'm going to multi cross multiply the 2x minus 1 up, and I'm going to get x less than minus 2, bracket 2x minus 1. Makes perfect logistical sense, but I've definitely made a mistake. Alex? Huh? I can't guarantee that's not negative. Isn't that right? So if it's negative, I'd have to switch around there. Science. So Alex has a different way of doing that question. Alex, what would you have done instead? You multiply by 2x minus 1 squared on each side. It's not a matter of knowing what to do, it's why you do it. You do it because you can't guarantee it's not negative. Okay, that's why you're doing it. So would everybody agree you're just going to multiply all that out, get a quadratic equation and solve it. Is that okay? Now, the last one's quite easy as well. The last one's really easy. All right, if I'm correcting your tests and I see somebody do this, I'm just going to give you zero straight away. Would any of you have tried that square on both sides? I hope to God not. Because I ain't correcting it if I see that happen. What, what are we doing next? We're moving this to the other. And we're going to get x minus 1. Greater than 2x plus 1. And now and only now do you square both sides. All right. You're going to do question 13. You're going to do question 12. Uh, I suppose you're going to do 9 and 10, are we? Yeah. Let's do uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Answer it. Enjoy. Oh.